Hello and welcome to the National Museum of Computing's online Q&A. We might be closed because of COVID, but we're not letting that stop us bring our expertise and knowledge to the, the wider world. With us today, we have a panel of experts who are closely involved with all machines and systems in the galleries. Um, they're a combination of guides and experts in such systems as Colossus and Bomb, of course, which makes the museum so famous. Um, Tunny, ICR's mainframes, personal computers, the whole thing under the roof at the museum. As you may be aware, we've been uh, asking you, the public, to come to us for your questions over the last week or so, and we've got some really good ones coming in. Of course, we want more, so submit them as we move along in, in our uh, video Q and A's. Um, weren't we surprised to learn maybe Colossus and the bomb came top in some of the questions? So let's just get straight into it. So I appreciate people have got different levels of technical expertise on their knowledge of the systems, but I'm going to pitch in right with this one. Um, the valves. We had a question here from um, Virtual Colossus, who follows the museum. Um, if and when you run out of replacement valves for the Colossus rebuild, um, are the modern components that could be used to replace them within the same package to keep it running? So I think, what do you do if and when the valves break on the Colossus and finally you run out? Um, you might want to start, guys, by saying, what is a valve and why is it so important to Colossus? Right, uh, a valve. This is a valve. What is that? Looks like a light bulb. What is it? A valve can be considered in the um, in, in a computer as a switch, as an electronic switch. Um, valves were what was used in the first fifty years of electronics before transistors came along. So from the just before the First World War, through to the late 1950s valves were in use. There was some overlap with transistors as well. So, I mean, colour TVs were still in use into the late 1960s um, using valves. Um, so that's the, uh, of course, these things, these things are actually still in use now. Um, in things like guitar amplifiers, hi-fi amplifiers, still use valves. Marshall amplification they were only less than a mile away from the museum they still make valve amplifiers there at the factory in Bletchley they were groundbreaking because um, they allowed in the first instance they allowed uh, amplification a valve can amplify a signal so like in a in a guitar amplifier you put a little signal from a, a guitar pickup into it and you can amplify it up to fill Wembley Stadium or whatever. Um, the um, the switching, the way the switching goes is um, rather than controlling the signal by var variation, you just change the signal in a big step function. So you go from a zero to a one, so from a, a, a very low voltage to a very high voltage maybe um, in one step. And that, that's how the, the, the valves work in computers. So um, answering the question about Colossus, the first thing is that there's still quite a large number of these valves out there. Um, we keep getting donations of valves. Uh, and it's, it's usually, you know, granddad's died and he left a lot of these funny glass bottles in boxes in the shed. Um, do you want them? Um, we invariably say yes. Uh, invariably, about 75% of them are rubbish. They're old TV valves or whatever that aren't any use. Uh, but there's always some gold in there amongst the dross. And um, that's the way we can keep, we'll be able to keep, one of the ways we'll be able to keep uh, machines like Colossus going. The other way is the possibility of remanufacturing valves. Mm -hmm. Valves are still being made, not the ones that are in use in Colossus so much, but like I said before, the ones that are used in guitar amplifiers and hi-fi amplifiers. So if you've, got a, um, if you've got a production facility there that can make valves, if they can make guitar amplifier valves, they could be turned over to make Colossus valves. It's just a matter of the cost, because it would be, there'd be a tooling cost for it. How many do you get through? How's, you know, 
given frame a year or so? Do they burn out regularly and frequently? Should you be should you be worried about this? Are you worried about this now or not? Surprisingly, I mean, a lot of people. I mean, when Tommy Flowers put the idea forward to using valves in Colossus, um, most people the only uh, experience they'd had with valves at this time during the Second World War was in radios, and they knew that their radio, which maybe had five valves in it, typically once every six months or so, one of the valves would burn out. Mm. So they thought, if you've got three, two and a half thousand valves in a computer, then you know they'll be burning out very, very often. Uh, but the the big thing that Tommy Flowers said was. The reason that valves in your radio burn out is because you keep switching it off and on again. If you keep the thing on all the time, which they did with the Colossus machines, you run them 24 hours a day, they're not cooling down and heating up at regular intervals. So you don't get the problem with them burning out. Now, what we do with Colossus, we don't actually keep it on all the time. But what we do is when we switch it on and off, we bring the voltage up very slowly and take the voltage down very slowly. So it's what's called a soft start. You start the valves up very gently, so they warm up very gently, and uh, you, so you don't thermally shock them, and they're much less likely to fail. Okay, uh, Peter, I think you've got some some thoughts on that too. How do you, what 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 have you uh, what what are you what can you tell us a little about the valve and its importance? Steve's already mentioned the soft start and soft shutdown on Colossus that uh, enables us to make our rebuild reliable. Um, had we not done that, of course, we'd have been faced with a severe fire risk and a fast, fantastically large electricity bill, sitting drawing eight and a half kilowatts. Um, you know, leaving that on overnight is just unconscionable. Um, so bringing it up over the space of around about a minute and shutting it down in a similar sort of time frame uh, means that I think last time I asked mm -hmm. Phil Hayes, the, uh, the engineer in charge of the Colossus, what the failure rate was. I seem to remember something like 10 valve failures per year. Okay, and that's quite manageable given the stocks we've got. And I think the approximate uh, value of the time that we've got um, in, in, involved in those stocks is about 10 years of supply. And okay. of course, again, as Steve mentioned, we've got... Uh, donations coming in uh, left, right, and centre, many of which aren't really uh, appropriate, but um, but some are. Yeah. That comes with a downside, of course. You might argue if you get five thousand valves delivered, you're potentially looking at five thousand valves you've got to test. Yeah. Uh, so you need to take a, a, a sort of sardonic view of this and say, okay, I won't test them when they come in. I'll store them all the time. I've got space to store them, and yeah. I'll test them as when I need to 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 replace one. So we get around that. Just talking to the uh, modern replacements, um, the, the, the cost has been a rebuild and we're not stuck with this dilemma of um, do we conserve it or do we restore it and that sort of argument. If it was a, an original device then we might be faced with some, some agonising decisions about what to do with it. Um, some of the devices in there are um, they're, um, unobtainium, um, in particular the photo cells that are used in tape reader. Now, if you look very closely at our rebuild, you'll find there are some very consistent, very convincing look-alike readers. Mm. Uh, they look to to uh, 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 well, a quick view at least to be the original uh, selenium photo cells. But in fact, actually, if you look even closer, you'll find um, that they've got a photo diode stuck in there. Um, so modern replacements are, um, are are used in Colossus, and the ingenuity of the volunteers in charge of this knows no bounds really. So it's quite possible um, that with, with the evolving um, 3D printing technology, we might be able to print lookalike valves and replace them by, re by, by putting modern day electronics inside the, uh, a plastic envelope to look as, to, 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 to all intents and purposes as though it was the original device. So um, mm. I don't think we've got any real concerns that we can't keep it working in terms of its hardware. Um, but more of a worry is the uh, is preserving the expertise in actually working on this technology, and and that's where the other initiative, one of the other initiatives right. the museum has running, comes into play, and that is the um, the series of of, of uh, courses and, and practical sessions that Steve K runs uh, to try to get the uh, the valve technology more popularised. So uh, fingers crossed, we're in good shape, reasonably good shape to continue into the future. Almost like a lifetime supply of valves. 
Thank you all, everybody, for being able to join us today uh, in your own homes, uh, our panel of experts here. Don't forget, people who are watching the, the videos, we're doing this for you because the museum is closed right now thanks to the COVID lockdown. Um, normally, the, uh, all the volunteers here and experts here would be available around the museum to field your questions, um, precisely this kind of thing and more. Uh, obviously, in the museum, you have the benefit of being able to touch the rebuilds, see the systems, um, visit the coffee shop. Um, but there you go. Um, well, at this point, I'd love to thank you all uh, in the audience for joining us. Don't forget, if your question wasn't answered this time, we're going to get to it next time. If you have got a question and you haven't asked it so far, please submit via Twitter. It's um, hashtag ask, T-N-M-O-C. Just shoot over and we'll pick it up. And don't forget, most importantly, of course, we have, um, we're doing a crowd fundraiser as well. Um, if you check out the, uh, the museum's website, uh, the URL is crowdfunder. Uh, slash dot, uh, dot co dot uk slash fueling the future hyphen 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 powering hyphen the past probably easier if you go there rather than me trying to read it out over uh voice like this but you get the point so please visit our fundraiser as well and as i said get your questions in and hopefully we'll see you next time thank you very much for for joining us on this one <laughs>